Good morning, we're out and about doing our exercise for the day or one session, I might do three of these today There's a beautiful Brisbane water at Gosford beautiful, one of the absolutely most beautiful places in the world I want to talk to you about codependency, passive aggressive behaviour codependency and passive aggressive behaviour now um, one of the things I've learned about codependency is it's real and it can be harmful now I do believe in oral relationships there's an element of codependency there's an element of dependency whether co in the sense of together we depend on each other in a healthy way to get through life and have a great relationship. Then there's the codependency that has no boundaries or minimal boundaries by way of preventing arguments, I guess. I mean, when people have no boundaries, at some point there's going to be massive clashes or sulking this, these kind of behaviours, manipulative behaviours things that, you know, shouldn't happen and a lot of these people will just drug themselves out they'll be medicated or something or alcohol, dope, drugs, who knows there's all ways in which people manage these ridiculous forms of behaviour today um, and there's all excuses for it and other things but I I've run into people that have gone, oh, I'm really concerned about codependency. Oh, you know, and I'm thinking, well, you don't know me. I'm the loner from fucking way back. I can remember my mother used to work till six, seven at night. I was just saying to my sister the other day, I don't know what you were doing. I can't remember, but I'd be out running the streets. We were running the streets down at Flemington, Barella. Strathfield, roll the way out to Chalora um, at the age of seven, running the canals. I used to get the crap belted out of me by the stepfather. The mother used to have to pull him off. People don't know all this. I had the shit fucking belted out of me, but for the right reasons. And um, I could not stay still. I remember climbing out the window of the flats it's only seven year old down two stories down the drain pipe two stories, I don't know how I never got killed two stories and taken off got the hiding of me life when I come home they'd have the police looking for me and all that. I was that was just the way I was I definitely wasn't codependent so you meet these people um, girls, so I've met this woman, last woman, oh, codependency this, oh, codependency that, I'm going, right, right. All I saw was codependency, but fucking toxic codependency between her and her children. Absolute fucking toxic. And I used to say to her, you're like fucking Alice out of the Brady Bunch. She'd be cooking, running, oh, they'd... <sighs> I'm thinking, this is the best holiday resort I've ever seen codependent toxic fucking enmeshment deluxe and these young adult men, men I'd call them boys fucking egos out of control no comprehension of themselves whatsoever um, and this woman running around after him oh it was I couldn't believe it anyway she goes Oh, I don't want this relationship to come become codependent. I'm thinking, fucking codependent. I'd had enough women by the time I was 20 to sort all that shit out. We sorted all that shit out in fucking high school. So away we go. We're going along. And sure enough, everything was going fine. We had a balance. I'd go to her place a couple of nights a week. She'd come to my place. Everything was great. Then all of a sudden the codependency pops out. It'll work against you. 
That's the problem with codependency. It becomes passive aggressive, toxic um, opposition. Because the people that are codependent on the mother need her to feed their supply. They, she needs to be their supply. She needs to feed their needs. Their petty little infantile fucking needs. And a lot of you simp men, that's men that are a bit weak, wouldn't have a clue about fucking boundaries. A lot of these women don't. And it's just, oh God, it is such a mess. Now, if you've got your life together and you're well studied in, you know, life and relationships and all this, and you run into one of these, you better have your wits about you because it doesn't get better. I can tell you by experience, it doesn't get better. It only gets worse. You've got these parentified mugs and bitches, little bitches, I know because my niece was one. My poor sister went through hell for fucking years. Years from her daughter. I think it's all balanced out now somehow, but it was disgraceful. Just because, don't, uh, don't think for one minute there are not evil little people, evil fucking people. There is. And let the adults worry about that. The parents. But when these, when these children are parentified, domestically formed, partially into these forms of behaviour, then you've got no hope because it's a cultural formation. It's a formation that's been allowed in the character and personality of these people. Now, what you'll find is if you go for a mother and these children are depending on her to change their nappies and to wipe their noses, this is adult, young adult men and girls, change their nappies and wipe their noses and all that stuff, you're going to start to see passive aggressive. It starts off passive aggressive. Right? And what they'll start to do is undermine you behind your back to the parent that you're with. I'll start to, ah, oh, this, ah, oh, that. He, I w look, I was at this woman's place one night. This is unbelievable. I couldn't believe my, my, my ears or my eyes, the look on her face. Um, she comes up to me, and, and, and I'm telling you this so that you can prevent yourself from being bloody time-wasting. She comes up to me, and with this fucking look on her face of um, just completely puzzled and completely puzzled. <laughs> Morning. And um, you wouldn't believe it. She looks at me with this puzzled, like confused <laughs> look on her face. And she says, got kids fucking 23, 24 year old. No, don't make excuses for these evil little toxic fucking mongrels. He said to me that you're taking my attention away from him. And I'm standing there and I'm going, hang on a sec, I've just come down to visit my girlfriend. I'm not fucking getting involved in all this shit. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. We've got the covert emotional incest manifesting. Covert emotional incest is when the parent has parentified um, her children in a way in which she's emotionally using them to meet, to supply her with, with um, a partnership style of relationship from a children's base they emotionally start to rely on their children 
to supply them with what adults are supposed to and they start making these exchanges and it's actually ancestral because the child's not meant to be in that part of the mother's life. I'm going, I'm going oh my God, this kid is saying to you, where is my supply? You're supplying your adult self to this man now and you shouldn't be, it's mine. And I've gone, let's see where this goes. She had, didn't have a clue. I'd already forewarned her that this was coming. I could see it a mile away. It was like a block of ice. The ice started, or the sand in the hourglass. As the ice started melting, things just got worse. The smaller the block of ice got, the more tension there was. And these are, this is a woman that's talking about fucking codependency and passive aggressive behavior all of it manifesting in front of me and i'm standing there i'm going what's she talking to me about codependency for this woman's fucking lost it and you're trying to navigate it right you're trying to have a relationship with this person and you're watching it and they're filling themselves up with fucking drugs and christ knows what and that, look they haven't got a clue They just have not got a clue. And, the, and you stand there and you're going, I don't think you know what codependency is. Because it's all over you. Drowned in it. Going to the, already sitting on the bottom, the boat sunk. And what's more, it's the fabric and fibre of the domestic tribal fucking way of life and this is where if you're if you're a, a person that's you know in their frame and has done everything you can to be the best version of yourself and I mean that sensibly not pridefully the best version of yourself in a way in which you can present yourself mentally emotionally physically and spiritually to a person um without all this shit and rubbish and garbage right then my advice is look guys honestly as soon as you see this trouble get out um i had a breakup with this girl and i met another woman in between um actually she was and don't get me wrong these these women they're, they're attractive in their own right they're not going to have trouble getting men they can't keep them but they, they can get them oh this Sheila was hot and you know you get a, oh I just want to have a proper relationship I just don't you know I don't want to this and that the next thing they're banging their brains out all within hours anyway all that aside because um, I'm not going to waste my time either and I'm not into all that but it, you know, this is just how it works out when you end, the grass is not greener on the other side. It's just not. So the next thing, we're at the beach. She looked fucking hot in, in a bikini and shit. And I, I enjoy the company of attractive women. The phone rings, right? So now we're starting to see what's going on behind the scenes. Oh, there's this daughter ringing from jail. Daughter's ringing from jail. And it's on. And I've gone, no, I won't be hanging around for any more of this. So we got through that date and I've gone, no, I won't be doing any more. I don't want to see you anymore. And she stalked a bit in that, but she dissipated in the end. And I'm going, another one. It's children all over her. No boundaries, nothing. And she had seven children to different men. So did the other, had two children to different men. Poor buggers. Are they poor buggers, but are they just deliberately ignorant? They're just not putting themselves in a position where they're sorting out their lives. I got no fucking sympathy for them, I can tell you that right now. Why would I have? You know, you put the work into your life and you go out there to meet people and their lives are just a fucking mess. Mess, they own nothing, they've got nothing. 
There's drugs and drink and all this rubbish and nonsense. And you've got to be careful of this. Really, really careful. You've got to identify and go, nah, I'm better off on my own. Because I gave another one a run. I gave the other one, the first one, another go. We thought, well, we'll have another go. You just come to my place. I thought in the meantime, this will sort itself out. And I thought, I'll watch this space. So everything's going along fine. She's coming over. She seemed pretty well clear-headed. She came over there stoned a couple of times. I told her not to. And... Um, Nothing seemed to be getting resolved. And this is the thing. You will not find resolve with their children. Adult children will not. Depending on their mentality. And these guys were pretty poor. There was never going to be a result. So what was she doing? I think she was just winging it, to be honest. Because I said to her, you're running on my tolerance and we'll just see how it goes. So we got about eight... Nine months in, we passed the two-year mark of knowing each other, and I'm thinking that was fucking not the best two years I've ever had. <laughs> um, woeful. Anyway, I'm chipping away at it, and um, all I'm watching is this codependency between her and her children. She would not. She would not sit everyone down at a table and sort out what the issue was. I said to her a couple of times, do you want to sort this out? Oh no, so-and-so's having trouble with it. I'm thinking, she didn't, she had no clue. I'm thinking, are you for real? Are you that, um, are you that controlled by these sons of yours? And I'm thinking, uh-oh, this ain't gonna, this ain't gonna last. So, Another month ago, oh, we're going to sort this out. Oh no, the other one's got a problem with it. I'm thinking, no, I think you've got a problem with it. Your codependency and enmeshment with your sons and on your sons is blocking you. See, her sons were more important than the relationship. And I come to realise that. So, this is how blind and stupid they are these people so I detached I completely detached whether she was there or not made no difference to me whether she came or not made, made no difference to me and then all of a sudden this woman went into a change she changed she started to want to come over more um, she started wanting to hang around more and that threw me out because by this time I was fucking just thinking oh well, we'll give it a go. But then she started smoking more cigarettes and come, coming over stoned again. And I'm going, okay, so what we've got here is a person that thinks the closer they get, the more they can get away with. And that proof was in the pit pudding because she was close to her sons and they were running all over her. She must have went through a marriage and just gotten away with fucking murder. And I looked at this person one day and I saw somebody that was stoned, smoking her head off and thinking, and, and having no clue of where my mind was at with any of it. None. Completely fucking blind to where I was at. No clue. As long as she had a smoke and she was stoned, that was, that was it. And I've gone, what on earth am I really dealing with here? I've gone, this is just, I, I've got myself in a situation that's really not good at all. And you could see it catching up with her health and, and her mind was pretty well fucked. And you're probably thinking, what were you doing with her? Well, this is what can happen. That's why I'm doing the fucking video. So, I got a, I got a, I got a realization. I got a shock that this person is out of control.
they got their habits. They're going to stick by their habits. They ain't going to let them go. And they're going to try and go one step further and bring them to your domain. Well, my domain's a lot fucking different to her domain. She hadn't got a domain. She just rents somebody else's house. That's where life puts you when you live like that. Kind of, you end up like that. Look. Just derelict. And that's what I saw. I saw this woman that had just abused herself. Abused her health, abused her mind. Was, appeared to be functioning, but she wasn't. She wasn't. She was just turning up and winging it. And I couldn't help her. She definitely wasn't going to be meeting my needs. She had no resolve because of her codependency. And codependency is a form of passive-aggressive punishment. And these rebel types run on having some kind of sense of doing wrong in their mind. So she was doing wrong to her boys by coming to my place. And then she was doing wrong to me by not having me at her place. And the whole thing was just wrong because she was wrong. At the end of the day, the woman was wrong. She wasn't the right person for me. Or could have, could have been, but no, she wasn't. And that's how she'll end up. She'll just end up wrong. It's got nothing to do whether she's a good person and doesn't, you know, does this for people and does that for people. And that's irrelevant, because so do I. We're talking about dynamics. <coughs> Excuse me. And you have to be aware of these dynamics. My point is, number one, don't date sing single mothers. I know it's Mother's Day and everything, but that's my present to you single mothers. If you haven't got your lives in order, and most of you haven't, 80% of children in jail are from single mothers. Jared Hayne is a classic example of that. The NRL star. All look grandiose on the outside, but on the inside, no. Because, anyway... And you know what, I really don't care what people say. Because I know by experience, I've lived it. I've seen it. The, the horrible, the horrible enmeshment and codependency these women can have on their male, young male sons. It's wicked and it's horrible. They only go out to get fucked because they can't, they can't do it. Because they run back and live with them after you've had a go at them too evil it is it's all evil it's all demonic it's got nothing to do with god and i and really honestly they'll get what they deserve and that's nothing none of them not one of them have i seen have ended up with anything positive and they think it's a joke they really do think it's a joke it's so sad now drive you around the bend, in the end you'll do your block and tell them to piss off anyway. Because they've got no clue of where you're at. They don't want to have a clue of where you're at. They don't care about where you're at. Makes no difference about where you're at. It's only about where they're at and where their children are at. And that's it. When somebody says to you, shit about codependency look straight into their own life because guaranteed they're codependent on someone and usually it'll be their children or a parent someone close possibly the best friend oh how many best friends have fucked relationships up for, for people and what you'll find is i've seen this so many times they'll be dependent on their best friend and the next thing the best friend wants to take you to bed when they're not around. 
can you see how it all one thing just works with the other one thing just turns on the other there's no structure um, a couple of the women older women that I've dated have said oh my my husband took off with my best friend why no boundaries oh my children interfered with my they won't tell you this my children ruined my last relationship you'll never get told that one but you can work it out oh my mother interfered so much the man went away oh yeah oh i was stoned and pissed and he didn't hang around they won't tell you all that my children drove him round the bend they won't tell you that oh i slept with another man they won't tell you that codependency is the number one sign that you're in for trouble and they will not deal with it and they'll try and put it on you that's why you need to have the full sensorial capabilities of your mind so you can see into the spiritual realm and underneath all this crap and rubbish that will waste your time let them waste their time with someone else the titties and the pussy don't worry about that there's plenty of that around don't worry about that if you got trouble first sign don't waste your time like i do just move on leave them be let them waste somebody else's time because they will so i'm in rehabilitation phase and i'm just rebuilding i'm not gonna engage my orbiters they can sit i'm just rebuilding 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 learning waiting on the power of this universe strengthening myself learning because as you get older you run out of time you start to run out of time and it's serious how you going mate good start running out of time you get older and i can't see the point in being in a relationship that's run by codependence codependence outside the elements of the relationship that's why it's not good to attach which is the opposite of dependency just don't attach you'll find it you'll find when the person exposes themselves for what they are it won't all be that bad it just won't all be that bad and you learn your lesson and you move on and that's it you just move on no hard feelings I'll never put myself in a position where at the end I've had to scream down the phone that this whole thing has just turned out to be abuse That was the most disappointing part for me and um, because they didn't have a clue and if they did have a clue they didn't she didn't care why because she went back to a codependency codependency being what her adult sons which were what which were the trouble all along they, she went back to the trouble so guess what she's going to end up with nothing but trouble 
And these are people that say they want peace. <laughs> yeah? Well, if you don't know what codependency is, I'm sorry, you're not going to know what peace is. Peace to a lot of these people is just suiting themselves with things that they like. Despite the consequences. <laughs> This is Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Everything comes back to your mind. Bye for now.